location from the IFC for that as well. But um, when I started to really study IFC, I, I realized that, that, wait a minute, everything is already there. Um, what has changed then? Well, the, the thing is that uh, Estonia is still uh, building up the, the properties uh, on top of uh, IFC 2x3. And actually, they, their definition is uh, rather old. Well, not old, but it's 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 been been there uh, there already uh, for for a while. So uh, when they started to do their uh, properties, uh, they they have two two uh, uh, kind of uh, um, let's say differences to what we do here in Finland. Uh, the what, the first of all, they had the old version. Here in Finland, we we decided that we will go directly to IFC four. Uh, the second thing is that we are just at this stage we are just focusing into properties and property sets which are particularly for for building permitting. Probably when we are studying, for example, procurement or construction or something like that, maybe maybe there is uh, additional needs and also um there has been um, we have had a uh, really uh, a lot of uh, debate about uh, the building services the hvac and electrical models and and structural models and uh, the structural uh, people and uh, the building uh, sorry the hvac people they uh they are they strongly believe that ifc does not support their needs and uh, this is a this is a fight Tana, that that I'm taking at the moment. But uh, probably we will find out uh, some kind of solution for that. Um, I also want to show at this point before um, maybe maybe we go a bit more in detail and maybe we can start uh, of also discussing. I like to show uh, the if you haven't looked. If you haven't looked uh, the IFC uh, documentation for a while, I, I highly recommend that you do that. So you you go to the website which is uh, technical.buildingsmart.org, uh, and here you can find standards. And for under the standards, you have the IFC specification database. Uh, you. In this uh, list, you will find all the all the IFC versions listed and documented, uh, and the documentation for all the versions. But if you look at the, the latest one, which is uh, marked as a development version, uh, it's pretty close to to uh, the IFC 4.3. Which is under under ISO voting at the moment. Uh, moment. There could be some uh, typos uh, that have been uh, uh, corrected, and uh, yeah, I haven't I haven't noticed anything else uh, other than typos. But of course, they, I haven't checked, for example, the infra infra uh, entities. But if you go to the to this documentation. Uh, I think it's brilliant. It's I, I think that all the the, uh, the standards should be uh, published this way. This is really easy to understand and really easy to 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 read. Can I, First, can yeah. I interrupt there and just say that um, the structure of the documentation of of uh, the IFC um, is actually the structure in ISO standards as a whole. Yep. Um, the, the, um, the challenge has always been to produce technical documentation that was complete and accurate and, uh, as, um, uh, and, and as cross-linked as possible. But in theory, you have to be able to uh, print the whole document as if you were going to buy it from ISO. And so any ISO document has uh, forward and introduction and chapter one is always the scope and 
chapter two is always this thing called normative references. What other standards might you have to read? Chapter three is always terms and definitions. Um, and that's where all the fun is, because you can argue about terms and definitions forever and ever. And then it gets into the detail. And then you have annexes of things that uh, aren't formally part of the standard, but we think you'll find interesting, like diagrams, like examples, and so on. Um, but what's really good about the new documentation is that it's searchable. So even if you know nothing about IFC, you can go to the search box and type in uh, uh, damper, um, and it'll give you all the references in the standard to um, that, whether it's an object or a property set or a system definition or whatever. And so I, I just sit there on the search. When, when people say, oh, IFC can't do um, um, uh, well, welds between steel elements, I just type in the word weld and I find everything I want to know. Um, and so it's almost that you don't have to know anything about IFC anymore. You can just use the search function all the time. Yeah. Here, I just, uh, as a reference, I took uh, the 9650 part one. Yeah. And if you look at the, the table of content, you can see that it's identical to to the uh, structure of the the the, the list in here in uh, on the left uh, in the IFC uh, documentation page. So now now the the how this the how the the, the documentation of the IFC is uh, built on on Building Smart website. Uh, uh, it's really easy to 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 understand and and read because it's identical to the to the actual printed or PDF version of the the standard. But that's not all. Uh, there's even more uh, goodies in this. It's uh, this. So if I if I want to know, uh, uh, I, 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 I'm interested in in walls. So of course I can uh, write here wall. Right. Oh, wall, uh, and I will get like Nick said. You will get uh, a list of uh, of uh, uh, the, the the results, uh, and I'm interested in the IFC wall. That's uh, that's uh, what I'm interested in at this moment. So this is this is really really nice thing. So here I can see the inheritance structure. Of the of the uh, IF, uh, the IFC element that I'm uh, looking at, and uh, this opens up totally new new uh, perspective to the entities, because uh, as I explained when I was giving uh, showing this, uh, I found out that most of the things that uh, I need are actually defined already in in IFC. And uh, the the nice thing about IFC is that we have uh, properties which are con uh, 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 connected directly to the to the wall. So, for example, IFC wall. It has uh, a list of property sets. But if you look at the property property sets, there is only P set wall common. Uh, is that the only one? Maybe that's the only one which is directly connected to IFC wall. Oh, there's wall base quantities. That's the, the second one. So we have two property sets out of maybe 15 or 20, which are directly connected to, to the wall. The others are inherited from the uh, entities above. So if I go to IFC build element, which is uh, the parent object for all of these objects, which I see here, I can see almost identical list of uh, property sets. And if I go even further, I go to IFC element, or maybe I go, uh, let's go to IFC product. Don't confuse that to products that you buy from the, from the hardware store. Uh, IFC product. Maybe Nick can tell more about what this IFC product, but uh, uh, it's a it's a little bit different thing than the than the 
the doors and and uh, windows that you bought, buy from the it's anything store. you can kick yeah <laughs> that's good so basically here we have uh sorry maybe i go to ifc root because there is uh many many property sets which are inherited uh no uh sorry uh no property sets inherited from the ifc root i have to probably go to project uh Oh, let's go to the wall. It's probably inherited from the IFC entity. So if we look, ah, uh, sorry, IFC element, that's the one. Yes, there it is. So all these uh, property sets which we see here. For example, uh, something which is connected to, for example, environmental impact values that's we discussed, or environment and condition, or uh, maybe uh, uh, what could be, uh, well, no, those are not maybe, but, but at least those two are, are connected to, to uh, building permits. Uh, and we can find that from the IFC element and it's inherited to all entities which are which have the IFC element as a parent entity but uh, like uh, navigating through these different elements and property sets it's really easy nowadays uh, because of this new new uh, documentation so I'm, I'm a big fan of this Okay, any questions at this stage? Are you still with me? Yeah. Bit of a shock, isn't it? Because we got one guy from Canada who's I think got that special look on his face that says I've never had to think about this before. <laughs> <laughs> I never have to think about it again. Well yeah, I mean I think you know, you know it, it's a good point that we're doing the work so you won't have to. <laughs> um, at the same time, um, we have to explain what we're doing. Um, we, we're, we're not, um, uh, we want to, people to understand the process we're going through. I think the, 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 the big point that Tom is making is that um, traditionally information requirements have been very long. <laughs> um, I've seen uh, an organization preparing 2,000 pages of information requirements. Um, uh, and the reason for that was that they came across a list of 2,000 different kinds of objects and they decided to document each one. The way that the IFC is organized is a hierarchy of specialization. So a wall is a kind of element and an element is a kind of product. Um, and some of the steps don't always make sense until you, you go closely at it. But it means that when we're talking about a wall, um, as Tommy showed, there are only two um, property sets that make a wall a wall and describe a wall which is different to anything else. And, and when we're doing the regulatory information requirements, um, we need to make sure that we um, identify the commonalities. And if we're thinking about carbon, we could say that every physical element should have a material and volume, for example. And that's, you know, and if we apply that to IFC product or IFC element somewhere, then it applies to everything below it. And so it becomes very efficient for people to implement, to understand, to check and review. Whereas if you end up with 2000 pages of uh, schedules, uh, no one can check them. Um, I, I, I upset the poor guy whose job it was to maintain this this massive document by saying, has anyone ever checked what you're doing? And he said, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, 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 you know, and, and um, so there's, you know, it, yeah, it's technical. It's, um, it's a discipline. But what we want to do is to make sure that what we deliver 
um, is checkable by you guys, that you can look at it and say, oh, I recognize that. I'm looking at a wall, and you're absolutely right that what makes a wall special is these properties or whatever, and that makes it interesting for what we're trying to do. Um, and uh, um, so uh, it's not just a matter of making long spreadsheet lists, although, as you saw, that's part of the process. Um, but then to rationalize it um, and understand that you know, there are topics in, in regulation like the external envelope and uh, when we come to uh, energy regulation, anything that might be in the envelope, it has to have a U value, it has to have a, 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 a reflection coefficient, it has to have a thermal capacity if you're going to do anything. Um, and so it, it's not only are we trying to gather the information or the requirements from different countries, but we want to make sure we organize it and rationalize it so that people coming afterwards can say, um, yeah, they got it right, or conversely, um, I think that's wrong, um, uh, and so on. So um, it sounds really simple to say regulatory information requirements, a list of properties, but we want to make sure that we do this, this uh, uh, process uh, as we go along. Uh, of course, we've got to manage the fact that we've got information from Finland, Estonia, uh, and it has to have a translation into uh, IFC speak. Um, and um, we also have to make sure it has a translation into international English. Um, uh, but um, yeah, and, and that's one of the nice things about the Building Smart Data Dictionary is that it can hold multiple uh, languages uh, to, to help make help people understand what it is and use it in their local implementations. Mm -hmm. um, the I've currently got the um, the long boring spreadsheet from the English work, and I think we've got about two thousand five hundred properties. Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> the the 2,000 pages, uh, each page had 120 something or entries on it. Anyway, um, but it needs to be rationalized, of course. Um, and some of them are um, uh, specific to the UK, like a cross reference is, is this element already compliant with uh, approved document B? Um, that's not a property that's going to be of any interest to the international community. But we might decide that we do need a property uh, so that people can list um, other regulations the object is already compliant to or something. So, so it, you know, there's, there's a process of generalizing it. Um, and uh, uh, so on. So that's what we're about. Mm. My goal, yeah. My goal is to, uh, of course, the, the ultimate goal is to, to automate work, the, the information flows. Yeah. And if the regulator, uh, if, if the building authority can check the model without opening the model, then I have succeeded. So, uh, because in my vision, uh, or and, and this is uh, maybe not the vision, this is a reality, the, the building of thought, uh, the building controllers they are not going to be beam specialists uh, that's not the purpose and uh, the reason why we are doing all this kind of technical stuff is that we want to automate the things and in order to automate things you need to be uh, standardized you have to harmonize the the data not only the data itself but also the, that uh, at, Actually, the, the most important thing is to harmonize where the data is. So the location of the data needs to be harmonized because then you can make these uh, checks, these rules that, okay, check that the wall, uh, in, in wall or entities, there is a property set called P set wall common. And in the uh, uh, P set wall common property set, you will have a proper a property uh, is, uh, 
is uh, external set uh, correct way. Is external is a property which defines that if if the wall is an external wall or is is it a the internal wall. So 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 the, once we have done this, then we can kind of make the rules. But if we haven't done this, then the architects, the engineers will use they would just use any properties. Uh, and the the big drag is that uh, they are the, the the designers are using a lot of uh, pre-made libraries uh, offered by manufacturers or 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 uh, yeah uh, construction companies or or maybe they have built them themselves these libraries and they are total chaos. Uh, it's impossible, totally impossible to make any automated rule. Uh, uh, rule checking based on on these uh, libraries. So what we need to do, we need to harmonize the data that the building permit uh, authority gets, and uh, that's why we are doing this work. Uh, to so yeah. Rick, what is yeah. nice is that we've um, the current version of the Estonian requirements we put it in the IDS just to experiment and um, we already saw that a lot of stuff is missing so that's what really proves that we can write it down but no one they don't understand it they don't use it and it's it's really simple this way so yeah it really works and of course then if you can share the knowledge compare the things and so that maybe you don't have to understand you can just copy it adapt it to your own situation set it up once and then uh, and, and uh, the designers and the people making the bin files they, they will understand it and yeah you have some kind of okay this is how you should do it now let's get to work so that's that's i think a really good thing okay thanks uh there are two uh two uh, major con a bit, uh, well as i said we need to identify uh, the things first of all we need to identify uh, if we start we need, need to identify uh, uh, the walls and of course ifc uh, has a uh, there is a like a strong uh, the, the wall is defined as a i don't know what's the correct word but as a strong component we have an ifc wall and when uh, the architect uh, exports the IFC model, the, the, all the walls in the model should be IFC walls. But at that point, we still don't know too much about the walls. We just know that there are walls, but we need to know more. And uh, uh, for that, we have two major concepts in IFC, which are quite important. Uh, the first one is types. So basically, all com uh, elements in IFC they have uh, types. Uh, this is an extract of uh, of, uh, of the work that I did for for the uh, uh, specifying uh, the re registry, uh, the governmental registry structure. How how the data will be in the governmental registry uh, when it's uh, when it's archived, um, and uh, this is. This by kind of a following the IFC structure, kind of a quite a kind of a practical way. So we have always uh, the element is always based on type. So when we have the wall in IFC, we always have type, and the type contains that the type holds the common uh, properties. Of the of the walls that uh, uh, fulfill the type. So if we have ten walls in the model, uh, uh, five of them are uh, the type is external wall one, and uh, the other five are internal wa wall type two. Then we have only one type. Uh, uh, sorry, only two type objects or entities in the IFC, and those types specify. Uh, the common uh, properties for these two types and then the instances the wall instances in the model they have a very limited uh, number of uh, fields uh, attributes that are specifically specified for the instances 
So I, IFC has that. And uh, if I go back to the IFC, uh, and we have here the IFC wall type, it's uh, pretty much the same as, uh, as the, the, the definition is pretty much the same. It doesn't look too different. But it's uh, the whole concept that you understand that uh, everything in IFC model can be, uh, ba can be uh, it, the basis uh, for the information can come from the type. Uh, you can attach the same property sets to the type as you can uh, uh, attach to the entity itself, uh, which makes it rather flexible thing. And um, now, of course, the thing is that do all the authority tool or, 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 or these uh, uh, design tools do they support this uh, this uh, structure but this is uh, or this concept but this is really a powerful concept that we have the type and then we have the instance yeah in um, when when I started working with the US authorities um, we were very interested in the type information um, because maintenance and operations are usually attached to the different types, um, especially, especially for mechanical equipment. Um, and so we started to look at the um, files that the BIM authoring tools were producing. And we discovered that uh, they were producing files where every wall occurrence had a wall type. So it was, if there are 100 walls, there were 100 wall types. And so we had to speak to the vendors and say, um, why is that? And the answer was, well, no one's ever cared before. And we then um, persuaded all three of the major vendors to improve their IOC exports so that the number of types fell rapidly um, and it became much more meaningful and it meant we could reduce maintenance and operation schedules um, uh, sensibly uh, and so on. So um, I think the um, there is a cycle here that if we um, encourage the use of IFC for regulatory checking um, then there will be pressure on the vendors to improve the tools and in some cases to make things like the type more easily uh, described. Um, uh, my, my example of this is that um, it is on the spatial side that uh, currently the vendors make you add classification information to every single space um, but actually what uh, what people really want to do is to say, well, I've got 10 conference rooms and that's a type of space. And I'd like to say the classification of that type of space is omniclass this or uniclass that, whatever it happens to be, and record it just once. But at the moment, yeah. the vendors force you to go to every single space. Um, and you know, if it's just one thing like a classification, you can say, okay, but you know, um, the, the carpet follows from the space type, the, uh, um, the environmental conditions follows from the space type. And so um, one of the things that I expect to happen is that I've, as people want to create models that are good enough for regulatory compliance, there will then be pressure on the vendors to have more um, uh, efficient ways of getting the information in um, uh, and so on. And taking is external as example, um, you could drive yourself mad if you had to set that property on every mm. all around the edge of the building and on the, the roof slab things and every window and uh, external door. There's no reason why that shouldn't be automated um, and so on. And uh, again, whether it's a better interfaces or um, was a topic called semantic enhancement where maybe it works out for uh, the the uh, uh, the tool works out for itself which are the external elements and so on so um, I think as people get more and more interested um, in 
the quality of the information, there will be pressure on the vendors to improve the tools that uh, that they offer. Uh, I have uh, uh, so in this. Uh, uh, Okay, I can see that Google is doing something. Um, let's see, I tried to refresh this. Uh, so uh, what I have done here is that I have specified, uh, you can see the, the column B, uh, primary IFC entity, the Finnish primary IFC entity. So I have specified that, for example, the acoustical rating or the uh, is external, they are wall type properties. But then there's a backdoor, the secondary IFC entity. Entity. If the authoring tool does not support uh, wall, the wall types or types in general, you can use uh, the IFC wall instead, because the same property set and same property can be attached to both both of these uh, IFC elements. But then, if you are using the secondary, if you are using the backdoor, uh, then you need to make sure that if the secondary enti entity is used, the property values of the primary entity are discarded. And then all the values need to be equal. In If you have the external wall one, and then you are using the instant property, then you need to make sure that all the values, all, all these external walls have the is external property, for example, equally set. That's that's then that's up to up to the user. It's no longer uh, the IFC which is taking care of that. That's and, and one. Yeah. There's another. Uh, looking at my diagram, you can see that we're talking about wall type and wall. Um, we also use the idea of a system, um, and so uh, you might say that all the walls. Uh, of, of various different types make up the external envelope and you might say that's a system and the external envelope has got to have a fire rating um, uh, at a certain level and so system is the other way of uh, reducing the amount of manual input you have to do because if you group all the uh, different doors, walls, um, um, windows and say that's an external envelope as a whole um, then uh, you might be able to set the properties on a system. Yeah. And I think your earlier remark that the uh, HVAC people aren't happy with IFC, um, I wouldn't be surprised if that turned out to be because they didn't understand the idea of a system. Um, I really, you know, not now, but I would, we should have that discussion as to what it is that they think is wrong because the, the HVAC stuff has been in the IFC for 20 years now. Um, and um, not had any complaints yet until today. <laughs> no, the, the thing that they are, they, they are complaining that uh, the entities uh, that we, uh, if we check the, the distribution element, uh, well, actually we need to, we have to check from the shared data schemas, building services elements. They are not happy with the elements that we we, we have uh, in in. So uh, if we take a flow terminal here, so uh, they said that they are not enough. That they have 780 uh, different components, and uh well of course but there's a second thing that i want to explain uh maybe before we go there but maybe this is a discussion that we can uh okay yeah we can talk take uh because uh this brings uh me to to the second concept which is important for for identity uh for for the object or entity identification as i said that when we are exporting the walls from the from the authoring tool uh we will have walls, but we need to know a bit more about those walls. And of course, we can use the type when we can, we can say the type that, that the wall is external and wall is load bearing and stuff like that. But uh, we still don't know too much about uh, the, the entity. Well, uh, typically, uh, for example, for walls, we are using these project based uh, specifications, like we say that EXT1 
and then we have a, a spreadsheet or, or a document explaining that what is inside the EXD1. But uh, uh, for building permit purposes, we don't need to go that deep. What we can use, and we we uh, we really benefit from this, uh, uh, these enumerations. So there's in IFC, all objects have a preset list of uh, enumerations. Uh, for some ob objects, they are good, uh, like, like the wall. This is really solid. This is, uh, I made a, a Finnish translation about this. So uh, I have uh, that uh, here somewhere. So uh, I have this in my in here. So I have here a uh, the codes, and uh, uh, I have used the codes uh, the the IFC uh, enums. Uh, uh, that's the code, and then uh, there's a. So if I change this to to Finnish, you can see that now the the, the uh, actual description changed. Or if I'm changing that to Swedish, then we have also the Swedish version of that. But the, the code is always the same, and then we have a small uh, also uh, description here. If I take all the content in all languages, we have the the, the description. Basically, this is uh, identical to the, this. This is copied directly from IFC. But uh, by specifying uh, the enumerations, we can we know a lot more about the objects than uh, uh, and we don't know we don't need to know uh, maybe for building per permit purposes this will be enough we know we know the the, the type value so we need uh, we we need uh, we know this. Uh, 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 enumeration value and then we maybe have some additional property sets like uh, the wolf uh, fire rating and stuff like that and then that's that probably is good enough for for building permit purposes uh, it's not going to be enough for for example for co2 but uh, it for for building permit purposes uh, if if we just kind of yeah that uh, as I said, for some objects, this is not so good. And this is probably something that we need to discuss that shall we, uh, uh, shall we take that uh, and, and uh, propose, for example, because this beam, uh, I, I, I start try to, to, uh, to Google all these and uh, impossible um, the, the, and, and even more difficult was column so uh, I was able to find almost everything from the list uh, but when I went to IFC column uh, the list is short but it's Well, oh, sorry, the beam was more difficult. Yeah, this is this was good, but but uh, the the beam is uh, there are some some beam elements uh, which are totally understandable. Maybe maybe Nick can help, but I, I think that they're still on uh, that you you don't understand. For example, what is a uh, a difference between beam, uh, diagraph, uh, grinder segment, hat stone, uh, choice, and sparrow. Well, the sparrow is maybe, yeah, but well, yeah, yeah. Um, but, who yeah. knows? I mean, there are definitions <laughs> exactly. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> I think the other, um, yeah, we there are, um, one of the things that developed alongside the IFC over the last 25 years is an ISO standard called mm -hmm. ISO 6706, I think. Um, you mean, uh, the terminology standard? Yeah, the terminology standard. 6707. Uh, uh, six, six, ah, okay. Well, close. Um, 
and uh, um, it's the only attempt outside of the IFC work to um, create a vocabulary um, and, and um, uh, rationalize it. It's not very, um, it's not something the industry has invested in. It hasn't invested in cross language translation. It hasn't invested in standard definitions. Um, and uh, I'm working with a professor at the Technion University in Israel um, because he spent five years on the definition of a secondary beam. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, of course, there are multiple definitions of a secondary beam, and that's what makes it interesting um, mm -hmm. that uh, you can define it. Uh, he was interested in taking photographs of bridges and automatically deducing what the secondary beams were. Um, you can look up a definition of a secondary beam in a civil engineering thing, and it'll say uh, a beam that passes load onto a primary beam. Um, but you look up another definition, and a, primary, uh, a secondary beam is one that collects floor loads and so on. So actually, within our industry, we don't have a very rigorous approach to terminology. Um, and we just going to have to live with that because we can't solve that. That's a problem we can't solve. All we can do is make suggestions and hints and use the resources, um, and, uh, uh, and so on. And, uh, I mean, I chose secondary beam because I thought it was a concept that I understood. Um, and he understood that we still argue. Um, so it, yeah, we, we have problems with terminology. Uh, we had a discussion as we were going out the door that um, any word in any regulation you could probably argue about. Um, uh, when I was at architecture school, um, uh, I was given a definition of a door, uh, which is that a door is a wall that hasn't made up its mind yet. Um, now, not a very useful definition, um, but it, it, it was out there. Um, and of course, you can take the idea of a door and say, does that include revolving doors? Does it include trap doors? Does it include, um, um, in the lecture theater where I studied, there was a massive door with a pivot in the middle so that people could come into the lecture hall at the same time as they were going out. Mm -hmm. and so on. Now, that's not a door type that I've ever seen in any IFC schema, um, uh, and so on. So, yeah, we're, we're dealing in a, a messy world, um, but I don't think it's so messy that what we're trying to do is impossible. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, the reality is uh, yeah. people have to do stuff. Yeah. But uh, I, I think because the, the, the type uh, enums they could be they are really powerful or they could be really powerful uh, for for creating rules because if if we can find uh, common uh, type type a enums then uh, um, anybody like rick can make a product uh, which works perfectly in estonia in finland and in uk because uh, the rules are, are the same because you can check the basic things using kind of the the, the, the enums basically uh, just just enums you can check a, a couple of properties x for example fire rating and and is external and and a couple of others and then the the types you could do a lot uh, you can do really lo uh, really uh, complex uh, 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 check checks already with this alone but yeah but that's something that uh, maybe we should uh, dig into maybe well i think if we find problems we can document them um and make suggestions but i i um you know it i think we can work with the assumption that we have to do something that people are doing this already in real life every day um checking plans and so um we, we we needn't have more 
anxiety about terminology than people have in everyday life, everyday life anyway. Um, but the, there's a there's a um, the major change, and as I see it, uh, the major change uh, in in the information and the maturity of the information uh, is in the the building permit process. Uh, kind of ha because we are aiming to to have automatic uh, uh, checking of information. Now in projects, projects you can always adjust, and in projects you can always there's always this BIM manager or somebody who is uh, good with computers and you who can adjust and uh, understand that okay now this information was uh, there or now it's uh, this kind of list that I need to check, but. In building permitting, in in uh, in the regulatory processes, there is no such uh, resources that you can uh, project per project, uh, project by project, check that where the information is this time or in which format the information is this time. So the the rules have to be uh, uh, you have to ha have kind of a single rule. Uh, that works for all models that uh, come in, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the challenge. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if, if we want to go any deeper into this uh, a list of, of, uh, of properties. Um, uh, just maybe uh, uh, this is still work in progress, and, and uh, there's uh, lots of um, entities that need to be solved. Oh well, not that many, to be honest. I have uh, solved most of the the uh, entities already, uh, but there are still uh, some things like foundations. Uh, there is no IFC foundation object. There is. Uh, couple of types of uh, footings. Uh, 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 there's a deep, deep foundation and, and uh, it's called the other one. Uh, uh, there's pile and footing. Uh, no, but then there is, is uh, there is also uh, like a <coughs> oh, foundation. There is well, piles are yes, but then uh, uh, cash and footing which is, uh, oh, sorry, that was the enumeration. Uh, cash and type. Cash and foundation type. Uh, this must be wrong. Enumeration defining the... Uh, because then we need to have cash and footing. Where is that? But that's the other one. Uh, so we have IFC footing. Yeah. And then we have D foundation. Maybe those are the two ones that I'm looking at. The IFC footing, which is... Uh, Part of the foundation. I think I think there's deep foundation, there's pile, and there's footing. Um, I, but there's a pile. I don't know what case on this? But um, uh, yeah. So there are, there are interesting um, situations where I would expect the um, regulations around foundations to say. Foundation shall do this and foundation shall do that, and it will apply to several different kinds of IFC object equally um, because the regulations don't make the distinctions that we make in the IFC. Uh, equally, sometimes you have uh, um, distinctions in the regulations that um, we don't make in the IFC and we may need to make, uh, and so on. So uh, it's not always one to one. And uh, sometimes you need additional properties to distinguish uh, which things the regulations are interested in um, from those uh, things that they're not interested in. Um, 
the 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 one that everyone always talks about is uh you often get models where if there is uh, sun shading uh, around a window people will use an ifc beam object to represent the uh, the slats of uh, the sun shading um, and people get very upset and excited about that but actually um it's not totally inaccurate but the real thing is are those uh, slats described as being load bearing or not um, uh, uh, and if they're not load bearing, then they will be of no interest to the structural um, uh, analysis and so on. So, um, whilst yeah, we there will be a minimum standard of modelling. Um, for you know, you must include spaces because uh, a lot of checking depends on the uses of spaces. Um, you must provide. Um, the basic architectural elements you must provide the um maybe the major bits of mep um very few regulations are actually interested in every bit of duct and pipe they're interested in system performance and so on so um that that i think will emerge um maybe not from this project but when people start to do automated compliance checking they'll discover which entities are really regulated um, and which aren't, um, and so on. So yeah, that's good. I think that that that's probably um, as much as far as we can go today. Um, it, it you know it's a progress update. Um, I hope to have the English material ready to merge in in the next couple of months, and then I need to start on the Scottish material. Uh, really hoping that we get. Um, interest from 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 Canada, from Germany. Um, I'm having conversations with the uh, in the Czech Republic, um, who are unlikely to join as formal members, but want to present or offer some of their their content. Um, and I think uh, uh, we're underway. It's hard work. You can see that. Um, uh, we, we set ourselves some quality targets um, about how the outcomes um, and, and it would be really, you know, we really want to encourage people to join in and find the experts who know these, this, um, you, know, you know all about Estonia, someone must know all about um, the Dutch regulations um, and I, I think many of the people we need to find uh, believe that their problem is purely national and they don't realize that there's an international community out there that, that wants to know what they're doing um, so that's the other thing that i hope you'll all take away is the reach out to 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 uh, see who the right people are to be involved with um, So that, yeah. And it's it's just like any other building smart project. Um, the room proposed it. The we now have a project team and a project structure uh, and reporting. At the end of it, our deliverables will be submitted to the standards committee of building smart, um, and hopefully they'll be approved. Um, and that will be a. a hopefully a, a mark of quality and international relevance um, which will set this underway okay any any final points anyone wants to ask or make okay i think toby thank you uh thank you. apologies for the um the inevitable technical problems um you you won't be reassured to know that other rooms have had it far worse than we've had it. <laughs> so, um, okay, I think we should take a wrap there. Thank you, Femi. Thank uh, you. Thank you, guys. Um, and so on. So let's yeah, early lunch break. Okay. Get on the front of the queue.